Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I've got material science up and running. Well, kind of. Uh, <laughs> so running across from right to left, uh, going through, basically through it as it's um, as it's all set up. First of all, we're making the um, the actual iridium plates over here because these we we need. Um, that's one of the one of the ingredients we need. So we've got the ingots coming in on this belt, turning them into plates as we have with every, everything else everywhere, and we're feeding them up up here because they're needed for the science pack production as well as across here for the for the um, data production. We also need these uh, material boxes, material samples, whatever they're called. Um, I touched on these a bit in the last episode. So these things, they do take they take uh, inputs of one of each of the, uh, the 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 iron, the copper, the plastic, and the stone to make. So I was looking into whether it was worth making those down on Norvis and shipping them up in the rocket. But it turns out they don't stack very high. So I'm building them up here instead because it's about two and a half times more efficient, even though it require even though it's combining four things into one. That's fine. Got lots of machines making those. Then along here we're doing the um, the mechanical facilities. We've got making the compressive data and the tensile data. Yes. So basically we're, here we're shipping in concrete into this one and iron into this one. This one's squashing the concrete to see what happens. This one's stretching the steel, steel not iron, to see what happens. Um, and both of these require some lube. They require the iridium for reasons. Material science pack, material packs because that's presumably what's being tested and data cards to put the data on so that's all being fed up the middle here. Um, the only reason the steel is over here is because I ran out of space on these ones. There's only room for four things and yeah I could have squeezed it in the middle by having um, by having this belt going down the middle and um, then really want to. I, I, but I didn't bother. So this unfortunately spits out quite a lot of waste product. So over here we've got um, waste, what's this, contaminated cosmic water being pumped out. That's okay, I can just shove it in a pipe and take it all the way off down the other end where I'm dealing with that sort of thing. It's also kicking out lots and lots of scrap. Look at all this scrap. That's that's crazy. I mean, how much is coming out for each one of these? So we're making one, for every, every single compressive strength data we're making, we're producing six scrap. No wonder there seems to be a lot of it. Um, we're also spitting out some of the iridium as well. So I've, I've put in a little loop back here so to, to, to get it back onto the onto the stream of iridium going in and where's that go oh, it comes okay that's badly designed I'm gonna to need to fix that um, so in theory <laughs> in theory what's going on here is anything that loops around is being passed back around here and going into here to be used first but it's not being used first because I messed up uh, what it sh it's actually being used last because there's because it's because it was trying to side load. So what I need to do is put a splitter in here and then prioritise that. So that's the thing I can do. It's not a, not a problem. I can I can I can sort that out. Um, oh, I think it did work earlier because I only had yes, I only had iridium on this on the the outer side of the belt coming up here, so the bottom side around here, so that it would pour into that one and then it would go in first. It would so it would be used up first. But then I put in some more iridium processing and forgot what I'd done over here, and. Yeah, as is traditional, that just got, caused it all to gum up. So what I need to do is input priority right, so that'll use up this one, the right-hand side, first. Um, that might work, although it's still only going to use the lower of these two tracks. The upper one isn't going to... Hmm, that isn't going to work. I'm going to have to come back and, and re, refiddle this a bit. Anyway, so this this is now basically working. Then we've got plasma being produced here to make hot science over here, and then using the thermofluid to make cold science. Again, spits out data in the same way, but this time it produces corrupted, no not corrupted, co um, contaminated scrap as well. And it looks like a similar sort of proportion. So we've got, oh and this time we've got eight being produced for every single one piece of useful stuff coming out. Jeez. So yeah, this is producing a large quantity of scrap. Um, this one has gummed up in the good way though because we've fully backed up on the data cards. This one has gummed up in the bad way, we've run out of data cards, there aren't enough being produced because the scrap has gummed up, and that's because it seems that... Let's have a look down here. Oh, that's because we've run out of, um, of what do you call it, uh, vulcanite. So there's supposed to be vulcanite appearing in this box here that will be put onto the belt and be used in here for smelting all this stuff down into, into actual useful metals that will then be taken away. Um, it appears we have run out of vulcanite, so let's, let's increase the vulcanite requests by a bit, because clearly a thousand isn't enough. Let's make that... 3,000. Um, and we'll have a look on Norvis as well and see how that's see how that rocket down there is getting on. That's this one. The rocket is completely full, so actually this does need to be dispatched. Let's let's dis why is it disabled? Not enough rocket sections. What? 
What is going on down here? Interesting. Um, this should be loading these in. I wonder if something gummed that up. Because there's definitely rocket. There's plenty of rocket sections coming along here. This inserter here is supposed to insert those. Let's say... Do that. It thinks it's got more... Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what's happened here, but I don't like it. Um, so this is outputting... No rocket sec. Oh, I can't. I can't tell. There's too many. There's too much of a tangle down here. So there's something has gone wrong here with the um, the rocket loading the rocket sections in, which means my um, space station is running out of all of this stuff, and all of this is backed up massively now. So something horrible has gone on here, and I need to work it out. However, <laughs> that's not the main thing I've been doing recently. Um, it's been it's been a little bit busy recently. So yeah, we got the um, the science theoretically working up here. So this is theoretically working um, in that this has managed to output a certain amount of the orange stuff which has gone up up the belt here as you can see it's coming onto this belt these ones up here are then turning it into um into into, into the insights uh i think it's insights whatever yeah insights and, and the memory cards the memory cards have also gummed up as well everything's just going wrong where's the where's the belt supposed to take these away Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't see. I'm going to have to take a good look at this. What? What? Why? Why has that happened? I mean, honestly, I've got, I've got these things over here. Why are you not doing your jobs? And I can't, I can't even look at the look at the um, attack that just happened and find out what the numbers were on it. But so clearly, four of these is not enough. I need to put some more of these in along here like that. But I probably don't have them up here. So at some point, yeah, I'll. I'll get that done. Um, <clears throat> this is turning into a, here is a list of things that Lawrence has screwed up, isn't it, rather than... <laughs> okay, so what looks like is happening here is, for some reason, these disposal belts are not feeding things in in quite the right way. Is that... I'm going to have to take... Ah, ice. No, I don't see. There's a, there's a splitter missing in here. So this this one is supposed to be splitting as it is and putting half of the orange cylinders on here and half of the orange cylinders around here to go across here. However, before it does that, I need another one of these splitters to pull out the the memory cards. And I'm going to need the same here as well by the looks of it. Yeah, to pull out the memory cards and spit them out down down this belt here. So that's that's what needs to happen up here. I can I can fix that. That's not a problem. Okay, so <laughs> this is turning this is, this is turning into a rather um, odd episode. So those all those things up in orbit there and on noise that I need to fix. But I've been on frost for the last ages, um, and the reason I came here was as I said in the last episode, one of the yeah these meteorites landed over here and blew up this electric pole and that cut off my power supply from my nuclear plant over here to the entire factory uh, and that was kind of frustrating uh, but what can you do so I had ended up having to go out there myself and fix it up and I thought while I'm here since I've decided that rockets are quite a lot better than delivery cannons let's try and switch over to using rockets to bring these resources back to um, back to Norvis so we've got a rocket here this is gradually getting loaded up. Um, as you can see, it's got a little bit of beryllium in it. It's got some rot, some stone that I had lying around and I didn't know what to do with. So I thought I'll take it back to Norvis and put it in the machines there somehow. Uh, there's a load of ice and loads and loads of cryonite. So the way this is working, as you can see, is that we've got all of these belts feeding the various different resources in. And they're being controlled by this receiver here that's picking up massive negative numbers from the other side. So we've got... Um, well, they're, they're all set to minus 50, 51,000, but as you can see, we've got decent amounts of cryonite, a little bit of ice, and a bit of beryllium. <coughs> I discovered that beryllium production was really rather slow, because there's not even a full belt of it coming down here. Um, so, I, did I go up here and boost? Yeah, so I went up here and improved this mine a bit. I put, put in a few more miners and basically to get as much out of it as I can, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's really struggling. So then I also went all the way down here somewhere and I set up another um, barrel mine all the way down here that's digging up more of the ore. Um, the problem is 
I didn't have enough belts with me, and this is an old enough um, outpost that, I, that it was from before I started using trains for everything. Um, so I've only got... I've, 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 they had this belt going up here carrying stone, so I split off half of it to carry the barrel. And then I've put in another facility up here... Uh, I split it, where I split it out again and started turning it into um, into beryllium. Now, that is... Oops. Kind of... I mean, it's, it's working, but again, there's these input problems. There's just not enough being produced here. Maybe I should upgrade all of this to red belts? I. The problem is there's no iron on this planet, so the only iron I have is coming in by delivery cannon capsule to here, so I don't really want to do that. Um, and to be honest, I think I'm not getting through that much barrel. Back when it was just being delivered by delivery cannon, it was kind of okay. Um, at least until the power got cut off. So I'm hoping that once I take a rocket full of it down there, or a rocket a tiny bit full of it, that's going to last for a decent while and I won't need any for a bit and it'll it'll sort of be able to catch up. Um, so yeah, this is horribly, horribly overspecced. We're using like a quarter of this, of the available throughput in the system. But it is producing... A small amount of the beryllium, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> but it does mean there's really not very much coming through here. I have put productivity. All I had some productivity modules with me, so I put them in these um, in these crushers to try and get a bit more out of it. I put them in here as well to get some out more out of the first couple of these. I I don't know which end I'm better off putting them in, to be honest. Um, my gut feeling is that it doesn't matter. You get a certain amount of multiplication. Actually, no, my. Yeah, my gut feeling is that it doesn't matter if, you, if as long as you put them in all of the machines for that stage because you're multiplying by the same one point whatever it is, where is it? 1.32 for everything. However, it's just occurred to me that if I take them out of these machines and put them in these, as long as they'll take the same number, then all of it is going through these machines, but only four fifths, four, four sixths of it is going through these. So I get a bit more bang for my buck. However, these only take three um, productivity modules, so I'm not sure. I'll have to have a bit of a think about that. But that would free up enough for me to do the same down here, and that might might be enough to help a bit. I'm not quite sure. Maybe maybe some more up here. Well, well I'll, I'll have a quick play with that. But so what I'm doing over here is just collecting up all of these resources, and once this rocket fills up, I'll catch it. I'll, I'll fly back to um, to Norvis and get back to normal. So normal service will be resumed down there, and we'll see how it how it goes and whether it's um, and whether the the current supplies are enough. I suspect at some point I'm going to need to come back here and upgrade this entire area to to a train based system just to get the throughput I need. The other thing is. This isn't really this isn't really a beryllium planet. This is really a cryonite planet. If we look in the the universe explorer, you can see that frost is mostly cryonite. There's also some coal and some beryl and a bit of copper and, and some uranium, which I'm making which I'm making use of. But it, that means that the beryllium patches they, they're they're around, sure, but they're not they're not as big. I and mean, that that cryonite is 10 million. The beryllium is four and a half million, and there's a lot and there's fewer of them as well. But if I take out a massive quantity of um, of railway, then it doesn't matter quite so much. I can push out a bit and try and, and try and find the beryllium. The down, the other downside. I thought, hey, let's try um, setting up a core miner. Those, those are great. They pull everything you could possibly want out of the core. But it turns out, if I do that, I get this stuff, which is um, let's go in here, core, um, core. Yeah, I'm getting uh, cryonite core fragments, not beryllium or beryl core fragments. And those, when you process them. They turn into core fragments, cryonite, and stone, and core fragments turn into all of those things. So I could get a lot of useful stuff out of this, but I wouldn't get any beryllium. So that actually isn't helpful. And as I say, that's and you can tell that. But if you look at the primary resource thing on here, you can see it's got it's got the cryonite symbol in there, not the uh, beryl symbol. And if I sort by these, the only thing that's got a beryl symbol is this asteroid belt, and I. Don't, and I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm virtually certain you can't use core miners in an asteroid belt. So I actually can't use the core miners to get the infinite supply of this that I would quite like to have. So that's a bit of a pain in the proverbial. Um, maybe I need to try and do some specific exploring. Let's see. Can, there's a, there's a um, let's, where's it, zone discovery. I can say I want to look for specifically for beryl planets. But I can't do targeted zone discovery at the moment. Oh, can I actually? No, targeted zone discovery requires um, 
this pack, Astronomic Science Pack 2, which I don't have. I only have Science Pack 1. So I can do, I can search for random. Um, in fact, this only costs 16. Let's do that. Um, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, let's cancel that for now. Uh, so let's do a few of these and just see if I happen to get lucky and find a beryllium planet. I don't think I will, but, you know, it's it's worth a shot. Um, yeah, so getting beryllium is a bit of a problem at the moment. I'm, as I think I am going to have to come back here at some point with Noctis. I'm probably going to have to come back here at some point with something different and, and just find uh, and set up a railway system, basically. Where's Noctis? There it is. Oh! <laughs> Speak it. Right. Well, I'm clearly going to have to go there now. The The problem with this is it is a 3% threat level planet, so there are going to be biters there. So I'm going to need to set up some sort of defences. Where have I just discovered now? I can't move this window. Oh, Str Regulus, Asteroid, and Miranda. What's Miranda like? Miranda. No, Miranda is also a cryonite planet. Okay, I might have, may have to do an expedition off to Noctis and set up another base out there. Um, that'll be quite interesting, actually, because I've made a few changes to how I want to do things since I set up my last base. Um, what the main one, chief one, being basically doing everything by rocket now instead of delivery cannon. So that's quite tempting. Um, the other... Oh, it's going to need cryonite, though. I'm going to ship that out there if I have to. Termina. That's fighting my lunch planet. Okay, so I might I may need to go out there and have have a have a look around, see what I can find. Um, I don't want to press that one. It's still trying to find barrel planets and not succeeding. Okay, so there's going to be a couple of a couple of things out there that I'll do differently from here. The most obvious one is that I'll have railways. Um, that'll allow me to transport larger quantities of stuff around. I'll be able to use the um, uh, core mining drills, so I'll be able to hopefully get a bit more. Um, beryllium that way and a bit more of everything that way as well and hopefully that'll be enough to keep the entire base ticking over um, hopefully let, let's have another look at that planet yeah we've got uranium so we're gonna have power that's good there's cryonite on there that's even better so I'm gonna have um, gonna have the cryonite because that's the other thing I need for this processing there is coal there's a tiny bit of crude oil that's gonna be problematic and there's no uh, there's no um, uh, vulcanite, which so vul lack of vulcanite and a lack of crude oil and not very much coal is going to make making rocket fuel difficult. Um, although that said, Norvis says it doesn't have any vulcanite, um, but it does when you start doing um, core mining. So it might be all right, might be okay. Uh, okay, so that yeah, Noctis is looking very very tempting. The question is, how many biters? What sort of density of biters are we talking here? It did say three percent threat. Which is pretty mild. I th I'd like to think I can deal with a 3% threat level. Yeah, okay, this looks okay. I think this is going to be my next port of call. I'm going to have to do, an, do a mission out here once I've got things tidied up a little bit. Okay, that's good. That gives me something to work on. <clears throat> so at the moment, as I say, filling this rocket up with useful stuff. That's great. Uh, once it's full, I'll fly back to Norvis, and then I can start fixing all those little things I was looking at then. Um, so that's the... Uh, I need to get more Vulcanite into space um, by working out why the rocket isn't launching. And that will hopefully fix up the, the problem of not being able to deal with the scrap quickly enough. Um, I also need to fix up the belts in orbit. That's going to be a little bit fiddly, but never mind. Um, I, can, I should be able to do something about that. And then I can go off and have a look at that new planet. Okay, that's my to-do list. I think that's going to keep me busy for a while. Um, is there anything I've forgotten on that? Almost certainly. But if there is, I can talk about it in a future episode. Oh, actually, one of the things I, I have I have done, <clears throat> as part of doing this this whole starting to do things by rocket, I brought out a large quantity of stacked rocket sections with me. Uh, when I flew out here, I, I didn't fill the rocket up, but I put a lot of them in there. So we've got, like, what... Um, 200 stacked, yeah, that's 200 stacked rocket sections, and each of those turned into five, so that's a thousand rocket sections. So ten rockets before I uh, will run out. And I also brought some um, uh, launch capsule, uh, rocket capsule things. These these things, and there's ten in there as well. So I'm I'm good for ten rockets plus this one before before I start to run out of supplies for that up here. Um, yes, rockets. 
<laughs> and I can also continue to look into the the research, like this rocket reusability. It's an it's four thousand science packs to get the next level of it, <clears throat> but it's each one of those I get an extra four of my rocket parts back each time I each time I fly somewhere. So it's kind of worth having. And since I can't research the Spidertron at the moment, um, which I want, I want to have the Spidertron so that I can um, ha leave one on each planet and have them there as sort of as a remote control thing that I can send scampering out to fix things up whenever I, um, whenever when if when like when a meteorite hits a um, hits a power pole, for example, I could control the Spidertron to go out and fix it. I, I think. Um, so that there's there's various things like that that I should hopefully be able to sort out with using a sp essentially using the Spidertron as a remote me, but that requires the orange science and I've run out of those because of the because of making making things badly basically. Uh, so yeah, let's let's resume this one. Okay, I think that's everything. I'm sure I'm sure there's other stuff I've forgotten, but that can but it can show up in the next episode. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you're not, then um, well, I don't know. Let me know what let me know what I'm doing wrong. I, if you although that said, if you've watched this point of the video, I expect you are enjoying the series. So yeah, if you are, please subscribe to the channel. It does kind of help. Um, it helps draw more people in and allows YouTube to take me slightly more seriously. So that would be nice. But uh, the most important thing, of course, is to keep coming back, coming back and watching new episodes. So hope I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>